Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Ah, these poor Democrats, these poor, poor Democrats. Now, of course, I don't actually feel bad for them, but I have to admit it does really suck when you put a whole lot of work into something, you build something up, and then the whole thing crumbles down with one light little flick. It's like a house of cards or a sandcastle that you build super high up, and then just a little flick or a little kick at the bottom causes the whole structure to start tumbling down. These Democrats, the Democrat establishment and the Brandon regime, put so much effort, money, and time into building up these false narratives and propaganda campaigns. And I mean so much effort, so much time, and so many millions of dollars. And then in less than one hour, as Fed Chair Jerome Powell sits in front of the Senate during a hearing, the entire propaganda structure of the Democrat Party crumbles, as it turns out that pretty much everything the Brandon regime has been telling you is a whole load of you know what. Of course, not surprising in the least, we've been saying this for months, but it's a beautiful thing to hear it from the Fed chairman himself debunking all of the economic lies coming out of this presidency. And so that's the topic of this video, friends. Let's contrast what the Biden administration is saying with, of course, reality. The two never seem to line up now, do they? Man, do I have some stuff to show you guys, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so let's talk about inflation and let's talk about the rise in energy prices. When did it all start? Well, it started the moment Joe Biden took office. I showed you guys this chart just yesterday, and it was a reaction to two specific things primarily. Biden's American Rescue Act, which is nothing but $2 trillion of government handout, printing press go burr, and the rise in energy cost was a direct result of Joe Biden's policy. Day one, he comes into office and cancels the Keystone XL pipeline, as well as immediately stopping new drilling permits. Inflation and energy costs basically peaked before the invasion of Ukraine. So we know that the rampant increase in energy costs and inflation started when Joe Biden took office and basically peaked before Vladimir Putin even decided to invade Ukraine. Yet Joe Biden and the Democrats have repeatedly tried to call it Putin's price hike and blame everything on Vladimir Putin. Well, today during a Senate hearing with Fed Chair Jerome Powell, even he now admits that, well, Joe Biden is just a big fat liar. To, to turn to another point, Chairman Powell, I realize there are a number of factors that play a role in the historic inflation that we're experiencing. Uh, supply chain disruptions, regulations that constrain supply. We've got rising inflation expectations and excessive fiscal spending. But the problem hasn't sprung out of nowhere. And in January of 2021, inflation was at 1.4 percent. By December of 2021, it had risen to 7 percent, a five-fold increase. Now, since the war in Ukraine began in late February, the rate of inflation has risen incrementally another 1.6 percent to a current level of 8.6 percent. So again, uh, from 7 percent to 8.6 percent. Given how inflation has escalated over the past 18 months, would you say that the war in Ukraine is the primary driver of inflation in America? No, inflation was high before, certainly before the uh, war in Ukraine broke out. Uh, I'm glad to hear you say that. The Biden administration seems to be intent on deflecting blame and as recently as just this past Sunday, spread the misinformation that Putin's invasion of Ukraine is the, quote, biggest single driver of inflation. I'm glad you agree with me that that is not the truth. Now that right there, folks, is a rough blow to the Democrat messaging campaign. That's not just anyone. That is the Federal Reserve Chair, Jerome Powell. That's the money guy, the monetary policy guy. Whether you like or dislike him, whether you support the Fed or want to see the end of the Fed, it doesn't matter. That's the guy. And he just shut down Joe Biden's misleading blame-deflecting campaign. Over. Done. And that wasn't the only one. We keep hearing from the Biden administration these days from Janet Yellen that a recession isn't an inevitable, which is one thing, but then you hear Kareem Jean-Pierre saying that, well, actually, economic indicators are real bullish and we're not headed into a recession. We're headed into a slow period of growth. And right now, we don't see a recession right now. That is not, we're not in a recession right now. Uh, right now, we're in a transition where we, we, will, we are uh, going to go into a place of stable and steady growth, and that's going to be, uh, that's, that's going to be our focus. And, just one more. Uh, and Joe Biden got real annoyed the other day when asked about a very basic, benign question in relation to recession fears and recession predictions. I, 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 I probably, even more likely than ever. Not the majority of them aren't saying that. Come on, don't make things up, okay? 
Now you sound like a Republican politician. Joe Biden claims that no real economists or no serious economists are predicting a recession. Of course not. The same garbage talking point that he used at the start of the inflation crisis. No serious economist is predicting long, widespread inflation, or he said something of the sort. There's nobody suggesting there's unchecked inflation on the way. It's un highly unlikely that it's going to be long-term inflation that's going to get out of hand. I don't know anybody who's worried about inflation. Well, the Brandon regime is saying, no way, no how, no recession, folks. Nothing to be scared of here. No serious economist is warning about a possible recession. And then once again, the money guy, Jerome Powell, says the exact opposite. We estimate the, the longer run neutral level of the federal funds rate to be in around two and a half percent. And actually, we think it will be appropriate uh, to, to raise rates above a neutral level into a, a, a moderately, modestly strict, uh, restrictive level because this is very high inflation and it's hurting everybody and and we need to do our job and and get inflation back on, on a path down to two percent and the way we're going to do that we think is is raise rates of course to that level of course it everything depends on the data that we see we're going to be we're we're, uh, we're you know really strongly committed to getting inflation down to two percent but we're going to be flexible as we see the data coming in do you agree with the perspective and then i'll be done but do you agree with the perspective that if interest rates go too high too fast that it could drive us into a recession it's certainly a possibility it's not our intended uh, outcome at all but it's certainly a possibility and and frankly the events of the last few months you know, around the world have have um, have made it more difficult for us to achieve what we want, which is 2% inflation gotcha. and still a strong labor market. It is certainly a possibility that Fed rate hikes, which are happening, they are coming, they already started at a 75 basis point hike just a couple weeks ago or a week ago. He says it's certainly possible to cause a recession. Folks, we might already be in a recession. We just don't have the quarter two numbers yet. And so everything that this administration is doing when it comes to messaging campaigns, it's nothing but smoke and mirrors and magic tricks. And of course, we know that magic tricks are all predicated on one specific thing, the one tactic that enables all of these tricks distraction it's all a gimmick folks and the most recent gimmick that we're seeing in real time that's already being debunked is joe biden's new gas tax relief a temporary halt on gas tax to reduce prices for consumers again not energy policy because we lack an energy policy the same sort of garbage policy like when we saw Joe Biden release millions of barrels of oil from the Strategic Oil Reserve. It doesn't actually do anything. It's all a political distraction, of course. So much so that even CNN is immediately calling out the Biden regime. President Obama called this a gimmick when he was asked about it during the campaign in 2008. This, this gas tax, you know, freeze. Can you give us a reality check? What's actually going to happen here for the American consumer? Well, Erica... President Obama called it a gimmick because, as almost any economist, Democrat and Republican can tell you, it is a gimmick. It doesn't solve the underlying problem, which is driving up uh, gas prices. To the extent it succeeds in lowering them a bit, it's likely to encourage people to drive more, which will create an offsetting uh, boost in demand and, and push the price uh, up and, and obviate that benefit. Where even Obama in 2008 basically says the same thing. But for us to suggest that 30 cents a day for three months is real relief. That that's a real energy policy means that we are not tackling the problem that has to be tackled. We are offering gimmicks when we're offering the same thing that John McCain's offering on the cheap. That means we're not presenting a truthful response to the challenges that we face in America. It doesn't do anything to solve the actual underlying issue. In fact, it might even make things worse. We have reports of, once again, money guy Jerome Powell saying that Fed rate hikes won't bring down gas or food prices, and he's totally correct. Now, it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but stick with me for a second. The whole strategy when it comes to Fed rate hikes to tackle rampant, out-of-control inflation is to crush consumer demand. And mostly, that's not targeting gas prices and food prices, but pretty much everything else in the economy. The only way to tackle inflation is to suppress demand. But what Joe Biden is proposing here would do the exact opposite. It would make gas appear cheaper because there's not that added tax on top of it, but the actual cost for a barrel of oil would remain the same. And then once demand starts to skyrocket because prices are being reduced and the tax is lifted, well, it's only temporary, the actual cost of a barrel of oil will continue to rise as demand rises and supply can't keep up. And then when the tax 
tax is added back on, well, you get the picture now, don't you? It's actually crazy because what I'm telling you guys here is just fundamental macroeconomics. I mean, it's like basic stuff. I'm not an economics major like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, excuse me, but you don't need to be to understand this stuff. Yet the most powerful people and the people setting the policy, the president of the United States and the party that he leads, the question I ask myself is, how are these people so utterly incompetent? How don't they get it? Well, the answer is simple. They do get it. They have very intelligent people, much smarter and more educated than me. The only thing is, they don't actually care. And they'd rather play politics with your lives, your savings, and your tax dollars instead of actually do the right thing. It's either they're grossly incompetent, just flat out stupid, or evil, or probably a mix of both. Honestly, it's the perfect campaign tag for this administration, with Biden and Kamala Harris on the ticket, the Biden-Harris ticket. Biden-Harris, stupid and evil. But that's all I got for you guys in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.